right, welcome back. So let's take a quick second here and get our scene all set up inside of Unity. And the reason why I'm doing this is just because I want to show you how I go about setting up, you know, my quick little prototype scenes when I'm starting to develop a new type of rigid body controller inside of Unity. Okay, so let's jump over into Unity 2018 and get started. Okay, so to get this going, what I'm going to do is create a new scene here by going to File and New Scene, and that creates a new default Unity scene for me. All right, and you might notice that I have this little toolbar up here. Now, you might not have that in your particular project, and that is just because I imported the Pro Builder tool set from the new Package Manager. So if I go to Windows, Package Manager over here, you can see that these are all the packages I currently have installed into my project. So we're gonna be going over post-processing and um, Eventually, I'll show you guys how to use, or I'll do some tutorials on how to use Pro Builder um, how to build levels and stuff like that inside of Unity, at least to start to prototype levels. All right, so it's kind of out of scope for this particular mini series. Um, I do want to just focus on the tank controller itself, but I wanted to point out these, that these are the packages I have installed into my current project. Okay, and that's why this little toolbar is up here. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new project folder in here. So I already have, you know, everything all set up in this tiny tanks folder here. But what I want to do is I want to call this the tank controller. All right. And that's because I'm going to put all the scripts that we create in this series inside of this particular folder here, uh, as well as all the art assets and everything like that in the scene and everything like that. So what I like to do is I like to create a very organized uh, folder structure. This is the, basically the folder structure that I follow. So what I'm going to do is create another folder by right clicking on this tank controller folder here and going to create and then folder we'll say art all right and I want to do a code folder all right and the reason why I do this for every single project or any type of unity package that I'm creating is that it it's a consistent workflow so anytime that I'm jumping into a new project the folder structure is the same so I know where everything is okay so I'm going to create a prefabs folder and I'm going to go and create the scenes folder. All right. And I'm going to leave the resources folder out for now. I don't need that just yet. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to come up here into my scene over here, into the hierarchy panel over here. Okay. And I want to create a new empty game object. Now, this empty game object is going to serve as the root for everything that exists inside of this particular scene here at least all the static stuff okay we'll keep the tank controller outside of this and so what i want to do is i want to call this the level uh, grp which is short for group okay and i want to make sure that it is at zero 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 so what i can do to quickly zero that out is just hit this little cogwheel over here and say reset and that will center that out for me okay and then underneath this level group i'm going to right click again and say create empty and this is going to be our geo group all right so i'll put all static geometry in there uh, i'm going to create a lighting group all right and i forgot to hit f2 on the keyboard all right so if you want to rename things really quickly you hit f2 on the keyboard all right so if i select it hit f2 that'll allow me to rename it quickly all right so with that we're pretty much good to go i'm going to go and drag the directional light into that lighting group so all the lights that I create for my particular scene here are going to be contained underneath this lighting group here. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back into this geo group. I'm going to select it. Okay. And I'm going to right click and say, create a new plane. All right. So what I want to do with this plane is I actually want to make it a little bigger. Okay. So I want to actually increase this to something like 20 by 20 in the X and Z directions. That'll basically give us enough room to test out our tank controller here okay and now i don't want to have this just a white plane that's obviously very boring what i want to do is i want to assign a material to it and i already have a material created here so inside of my reusable framework that i've created i have a grid material so i have this orange grid mat all right so let's duplicate that and I'll make all these assets available for you guys, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate that, and I'm going to put that into our art folder over here. Okay, so let's collapse that. So to quickly collapse 
whole hierarchy of folders, you can hold down the Shift and Alt keys on the controller. That allows you to expand everything really quickly. You'll notice so I don't hold it down, all right, and click the actual arrow here and then open it up again, everything is still expanded. But if I hold down Shift and Alt and click that little arrow and then click it again, it's all collapsed, okay? So let's come over here in our, this art folder here. Let's rename our grids folder so that we don't have the little one next to it. All right, and I'm just going to assign that material to it. All right, that way when I go and export out this particular package, all the assets will go with this particular folder structure over here, okay? I don't want there to be any dependencies between all these other folders here. I want everything to be uh, inside of this one hierarchy, okay? So what I want to do is select the orange grid mat here. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set the tiling to something like 20 by 20. Okay. All right. So you can see that basically creates a nice grid for us. Okay. Perfect. And now what I need to do, I'm going to come over here and rename this to ground just so it makes it clear. You can leave it named plain if you want, but I like to, you know, keep everything nice and clean in my unity project. So uh, when I jump back into it, everything is easy to find. So what I want to do now is I want to create a bounds group, okay? And to do that, I'm just going to right-click on the level group game object, say create empty, and this is going to be our bounds group, like so. And underneath that, I'm going to create another empty game object and just call this bound001. And on that bound001 game object, what I want to do is add a box collider to it. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to be able to prevent the tank from falling off the sides. Remember, we're going to set this up as a rigid body controller. All right. So if it were to fall off the side here, gravity will take hold and it'll just fall into nothingness. All right. So with that box collider assigned, this Unity component assigned, okay, what I want to do is increase the X size so that it fits just outside the bounds of that plane there. I'm going to make it a little bit taller as well. Okay. And we don't really need it to be any more than, you know, one or two in the Z direction here. So I'm just going to pull it out over the side. Now to get that really accurate, what I can do is I can utilize the gizmos over here. So I first want to go to an orthographic view. All right. So no perspective. And then I want to hit the little Y cone up here and that'll take me into that top view. All right. Perfect. So with that all set up, what I want to do now is hit Control D on the keyboard. That duplicates an object inside of our hierarchy if we have one selected. And I'm going to drag this to the other side. So this is going to be called our Bounds002, like so. All right. All right, so let's duplicate that again. We're going to do the left and right sides now. Okay. So I'm going to center up the bound here by just typing in zero for the Z direction. And then we want to rotate it 90 degrees and just pull it off to the left there like so. So I'm going to hit Control D again and pull that off to that side. All right. And that basically sets up our little tiny level there. All righty. So what I'm going to do is hit this little top button there. That'll put me back into perspective mode so I can rotate around this. And if we were to select our bounds group, you can see now we have our bounds completely surrounding our grid. All right, so the, again, this will just prevent our tank from falling off the sides here. Okay, so with that, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go and copy the tank folder here. Now, this will already be available for you, so you're not gonna have to do this particular step, but I just wanna put that into the tank controller here. We'll put that into our art folder. And I do like to organize these a bit better. So I'm going to create another folder and just call it objects like so. We'll put that into there. And grids really should be in uh, like a materials folder or global materials folder. It's usually what I like to do. So we'll say global materials because it's a material that is used, you know, just about in any scene. Okay. So let me get rid of that one there by hitting F2 on the keyboard. And let's go and drag out I'm not sure why it's sitting in the textures folder there. There are no textures for this particular tank. I'll clean that up for you guys. So I'm going to drag that out into my scene. And there we go. So now we have our cute little tank ready to go. Uh, the last thing that we're going to need from an art standpoint here is the reticle. Okay, so I made a 3D reticle. 
So let's duplicate that. And I'm going to drag that into my art folder as well. All right. And we will put that into objects. And remove the one from it, like so. All righty. And then I'm just going to drag and drop that out into the scene. All right. So I made this in Houdini, so it came in a little small. So I'm just going to drag that up a little bit or scale it up a little bit. All right. When you ever you export something from Houdini, it comes in a little bit tiny. Um, okay. There we go. So now we have all of our art assets ready to go. So once we get to the end of this particular mini series, we'll do all the post effects setup. So what I'm going to do for now is just leave it like that because we are now ready to start to add the code and the components to make all of this stuff work. Okay. So with that, I'm going to close out the video and move on to the next step.